the relationships in your life. The most important relationship of all, the most lasting relationship I will ever have is the relationship I have with myself. All other relationships come and go. Even marriages that last until death do us part end eventually. The one person I am with forever is me. My relationship with me is eternal. So what is this relationship like? Do I wake up in the morning glad to find myself here? Am I a person I like to be with? Do I enjoy my own thoughts? Do I laugh with myself? Do I love my body? Am I content being with me? If I don't have a good relationship with myself, how can I have a good one with someone else? If I don't love myself, I will always be looking for someone to complete me, to make me happy, to fulfill my dreams. Attracting healthy relationships. Being needy is the best way to attract an unsuccessful relationship. As author Wayne Dyer says, in any relationship in which two people become one, the end result is two half people. You see, if you expect the other person to fix your life or to be your better half, you are setting yourself up for failure. You want to really be happy with who you are before you enter a relationship. You want to be happy enough so that you don't even need a relationship to be happy. Also, if you have a relationship with someone who does not love himself or herself, then it is impossible to really please that person. You will never be good enough for someone who is insecure, frustrated, jealous, self-loathing, or resentful. Too often we knock ourselves out trying to be good enough for partners who don't have any idea how to accept our love because they don't love who they are. Life is a mirror. What we attract always mirrors those qualities we have or beliefs we have about ourselves and relationships. What others feel about us is their own limited perspective of life. We must learn that life has always loved us unconditionally. Jealous people are very insecure. They don't value themselves. They have no faith in their self-worth. Jealousy is really saying, I'm not good enough, I'm not worth loving, so I know my partner is going to cheat me or leave me for someone else. This creates anger and blame. If you stay with a jealous person, then you are saying that you don't deserve a loving relationship. It's often the same thing with spousal abusers. They either grow up in a family where abuse was normal and they just continue the family pattern, or they blame the world and their partners for their own lack of self-worth. Abusers will never stop the abuse pattern unless they undergo therapy. Abusers almost always have a parent they have deep resentment towards. Forgiveness is a vital issue for them. They must understand their patterns and be willing to change. Our parents' influence. All my relationships are based on the relationships I had with my parents. I was so shocked when I first discovered this. Years ago, I'd gone to a loving relationship workshop conducted by Sandra Ray, expecting to learn how to attract a loving relationship. I was so dismayed when I learned that we were going to work on our relationships with our parents. By the end of the workshop, though, I learned that the reason I had so many problems in my personal relationships was because of the very difficult childhood I had. The abuses my mother and I had endured, the abandonment and lovelessness of my childhood, it had all transferred itself into my current relationships. No wonder I attracted abusive men. No wonder they always abandoned me. No wonder I always felt unloved and unwanted. No wonder I always seemed to have bosses that frightened me. I was just living out what I had learned as a child. That was a very important workshop for me. I released a great deal of resentment and learned to work on forgiveness. The relationship with myself improved enormously and never again did I attract an abusive man. So rather than wasting our time saying men are no good or women are no good, let's look into the relationships we had with our parents or that our parents had between each other. For example, what are your current complaints about the men or women in your life? 
Think about how you would fill in these blanks. He never. He always. She never. She always. Men won't. Women won't. Is this the way your mother or father behaved toward you? Did your mother treat your father this way? Or does this describe the way your father treated your mother? How was love expressed in your home when you were a child? You may have to reach back into your childhood relationship with your father or mother to resolve deep-seated fears surrounding a relationship. Ask yourself, what do I have to give up to be in a relationship? How do I lose me when I'm in a relationship? What messages did I receive as a child that created a belief in me that relationships are painful? Affirm the love for yourself. Perhaps you have a very difficult time setting limits, and people tend to take advantage of you. You may be sending out a message that says, I do not value and respect myself. It's okay to abuse me and take advantage of me. But this does not have to be true for you any longer. Begin today to affirm your love and your respect for yourself. Look into a mirror frequently and tell yourself, I love you. As simple as this sounds, it's a very powerful healing affirmation. As you grow in self-love, your relationships will begin to reflect this love and respect as well. You may wish to consider joining a support group such as Codependence Anonymous or Al-Anon. These are wonderful groups that will assist you in establishing boundaries in your relationships and help you reconnect with the self-love and respect that is within you. Check your local phone directory for a group near you. It pleases me to notice that self-help groups are becoming the new social norm. People getting together with similar problems, working on solutions. If you meet someone at one of these groups, you know that while they may have some problems, they are working to improve the quality of their lives. I believe that we have comfort zones in our relationships with others. These comfort zones form when we are very small. If our parents treated us with love and respect, then we associate this type of treatment with being loved. If, as is the case for many of us, our parents were unable to treat us with love and respect, then we learn to be comfortable with this lack. In an effort to get our needs met, to feel loved and cared for, we associate being treated badly with being loved. This becomes our pattern, and as a pattern is formed in childhood, it becomes the pattern we use unconsciously in all our relationships. This belief pattern, that being treated badly equals love, knows no gender bias. I believe that this type of dysfunctional pattern is more widely recognized in women because culturally, women are encouraged to express vulnerability and are thus more willing to admit when their lives are not working. This is changing, however, as more and more men become willing to reconnect with their vulnerability. Women who love too much by Robin Norwood, is an excellent relationship book. And I also recommend the audio cassette album Making Relationships Work by Barbara DeAngelis. An affirmation for all of us is, I open my heart to love and I am safe. All of the important work we do is on ourselves. Wanting your mate to change is a subtle form of manipulation, a desire to have power over him or her. It may even be self-righteousness because it is saying that you are better than he or she is. Allow your partners in life to be as they choose to be. Encourage their self-exploration, self-discovery, self-love, self-acceptance, and self-worth. Finding love. If you are looking for a mate, I suggest that you make a list of all the qualities you would like this person to have and do go beyond tall, dark, and handsome, or cute, blonde, and pretty. List all the qualities you want. Then review this list and see how many of these qualities you possess. Are you willing to develop the ones you don't have? Then also ask yourself what it is within you that could be denying or delaying the attraction of this person to you. Are you willing to change those beliefs? Is there still a part of you that believes you are unlovable or unworthy of love? Is there a habit or belief you have that pushes love away? 
Is there a part of you that says, I don't ever want to have a marriage like my parents, therefore I won't fall in love? Perhaps you have feelings of isolation. It is very difficult to feel connected to others when, for the most part, we are disconnected from our own selves. In this case, you need to really focus some quality time on yourself right now. Become your own best friend. Rediscover what makes you happy, what you love to do. Pamper and spoil yourself. So often we look to others to make us feel loved and connected, when all they can do is mirror our own relationship with ourselves. What do you think you deserve in an intimate relationship? When we are coming from a place of feeling we can never get what we really want, it usually means our belief system supports not deserving. Is this what you truly believe about yourself, that you can't have what you truly want? This particular mental pattern no longer needs to be true for you. You can begin to make a change today. Make a few lists, such as what I believe about men, women, love, marriage, commitment, fidelity, trust, and children. These lists will show you any negative beliefs you need to change. You may be surprised by some of the messages that are hidden in your consciousness. Clean them out, and you may be delighted to see how different your next relationship is. It's interesting to note that most psychics report that the majority of people who come to them ask at least one of three questions. Psychics hear these same questions over and over. How can I get a relationship? How can I get rid of a relationship? How can I increase my finances? If you are in a relationship that you really want to get out of, use that all-powerful tool, Blessing with Love. Affirm, I bless you with love and I release you. You are free and I am free. Repeat this often. Then really be clear on what you do want in a relationship. Make a list if you need to. In the meantime, work on loving yourself nonstop. Love and accept the other person completely, just as they are. As you change and grow inside, you will find that one of two things happens automatically. The other person will either align with your desires or they will disappear altogether. If they leave your life, this transition will be smooth. Always begin by loving and appreciating yourself. Everything else will change. Use the affirmation, I now discover how wonderful I am. I choose to love and enjoy myself. It is very important to clean up and resolve old relationships in order to commit to a new one. If you are always talking about or thinking of your last love, you are not yet free and clear to enter the new one. Sometimes we deify our previous love in order to protect ourselves from being vulnerable in the present moment. In her book, A Return to Love, Marianne Williamson shares this wonderful barometer for our choices. She states that in all of our interactions, we are either moving towards love or moving away from love. Ideally, to be fully happy and alive, we want to be making choices in our life that move us towards love. As you work on resolving the blocks that stand between you and your relationship, practice being your own lover. Treat yourself to romance and love. Demonstrate to yourself how special you are. Pamper yourself. Treat yourself to small acts of kindness and appreciation. Buy yourself flowers. Surround yourself with colors, textures, and scents that please you. Life always mirrors back to us the feeling we have inside. As your inner sense of love and romance grows, the right person to share in your increasing sense of intimacy will be attracted to you like a magnet. Most importantly, you will not have to give up any part of your own self-intimacy to be with that person. The end of a relationship. The end of an affair is often a very painful time. We go into the I'm not good enough routine and punish ourselves. We think that because the other person no longer wants to be with us, there must be something wrong with us, and we often fall into deep despair. It is not true that there is something wrong with us, though. 
All relationships are learning experiences. We come together for a period of time. We share energy and experiences for as long as we can. We learn what we can together. Then there comes the time to part. This is normal and natural. Don't cling to an outworn romantic relationship just to avoid the pain of parting. Don't put up with physical or emotional abuse just to be with someone. You will never have a fulfilling life if you cling to old experiences. When we allow ourselves to be treated with disrespect, we are saying, I am not worth loving, so I have to stay here and accept this behavior. I can't bear to be alone with just myself, and I know that I'll never find another relationship. These negative affirmations pull you down. Instead, listen to the signals. When a relationship ends, life is giving you a chance for a new experience. This can be a time for deep gratitude, of acknowledging the good times you had together, and of appreciating all the learning experiences. Then you can release that relationship with love and get on with the next step in your life. This is a time for loving yourself with tenderness and understanding. This is not the end of your world. It's the beginning of a new phase. With love for yourself, this new time of your life can be far more wonderful than what you are just ending.